Okay, on the oil filter bracket, there's a few things to sort of make decisions about. Uh, the first one and the really obvious one is, do you want an oil cooler or not? And the second one is, how do you want your filter positioned? The stock filter bracket that comes with the 20 valve engine has no plumbing for an oil cooler. Uh, a lot of people just keep this. I'm going to keep this for now. I'll probably do a different bracket and an oil cooler in the future. Any 16 valve 4AGE engine, you're going to be able to take the oil filter bracket from and bolt it onto this block. I have a couple sitting right here. This one I think is off of an MR2. It is plumbed for an oil cooler and it has a pretty high profile. It sticks out pretty far from the block. This one, it also is plumbed for an oil cooler. It came with this stubby little uh, fitting, oil cooler fitting. Um, and most notably, it's like a third the height or even a quarter of the height of the, uh, the MR2 one. All right, I'm gonna lament a moment for a disappointment that I had when I received this engine. Uh, the distributor cap and rotor got destroyed in transit. It's uh, not a huge deal because I have the takeoff from my outgoing engine. Uh, so it's ready to go, I'm ready to rock. But I specifically hunted for an engine on eBay that had uh, intact cap and rotor on the distributor. So something to look out for, just something to expect. I don't know that you can avoid that. These all kind of seem to take a beating in transit. So they've got this little brace here that uh, helps support the intake surge tank and it has the engine hoist hook on it up here. Uh, and this is what this would normally look like. Here's one that came off of one of these engines. It's unmodified. It has a whole bunch of little vacuum hard lines attached to it. Uh, I found that none of these lines are really applicable to the AW11. I might regret cutting one off. I need to run one to my uh, my uh, cruise control and I need to run one to my charcoal canister. So. Uh, but I can still just tap these various vacuum locations um, to get that. The engine bay cooling fan has this connector on it. Look closely at this. The female connector for this joint is on the engine bay harness. It's a bit of a mystery when you're looking at that harness looking all over the engine you won't find the connector for it. That's because the connector for it is in the engine bay still. Uh, this cooling fan is controlled by the engine bay temperature sensor, which if you wire it up the way that I chose to wire it up, um, this you'll want to save this temperature sensor. It normally mounts to the front left corner of the engine in the engine bay. When it senses the engine bay is hot, this fan kicks on. A lot of problems come up if you don't have everything properly grounded. Don't forget this ground wire. So here's the side intake. Two different things happen here. The engine cooling fan, you can see it right there. And also the actual air intake for the engine goes through here. It goes in the side intake and comes out in the engine bay right here where you hook it up to your, you hook the plumbing up to the airflow meter and into the intake. Definitely a good argument to just simplify everything and put a cone filter on your 20 valve. I actually kind of like the original stock look and so for now I have everything routed through the original intake plumbing. And a couple more connectors from the chassis. Uh, these are not on the engine harness. This guy here is the reverse sensor on the transmission. This one is uh, a big bulky ground that goes to the transmission. Very important. And the speedometer cable. Uh, make sure you don't lose the little gasket that goes in here, which I have lost. It's just close by, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, there's a little gasket that goes on here. This threads into the speed sensor on your transmission. Oh, it comes out of the, it comes out of the lower part of the center tunnel down underneath the plastic cover. 
Okay, throttle cable uh, is already rerouted in my car. I believe this comes out down low, down here, normally um, closer to the AC lines. But you need a little more length, a little more slack on your throttle cable to make it reach the throttle bracket on the 20 valve engine. Uh, it's very easy, very common uh, solution is just to remove a couple of brackets for a minute and reroute this throttle cable up through uh, a higher location just to give you a few more inches. It's all you're going to need. You can see the throttle cable. Just have a zip tied to one of the lift hooks, the hoist hooks over here. You can see I've got plenty of slack the way I did it. Um, and it's mostly out of the way, so it looks pretty good. Back here we have the uh, low pressure fuel return line. Uh, this is going to connect up near the fuel rail. So I have an aftermarket high pressure fuel line coming. It hasn't arrived yet. This is the installed fuel line. After everything's installed, I'll just put this. This is one of the last things I installed. Uh, really nice. In the meantime, I'm using this one, the original AW11 high pressure fuel line. Uh, whatever you use, just be sure to be safe. It's a very dangerous uh, place to have a fuel leak. Everything is right next to the exhaust manifold. I removed the EVAP system from my supercharged race car and I started getting high pressure buildup in the fuel tank to a very dangerous level to where when you'd remove the fuel cap, fuel would come spraying out. Very dangerous situation. Uh, this system is the system that depressurizes the fuel tank. So I'm going to find a way of making sure that my EVAP system is working. Another thing that a lot of people get rid of. Um, whether or not they're doing a 20 valve swap is the cruise control system. Personally, I love cruise control. I'm keeping it. Well, this thing actually fits on the thermostat housing uh, unmodified. I think I might have trimmed the end down just a little bit. And I don't know if that was because of the size or because the end was a little uh, mangled. But most people, I think, just keep this original hose. It's fine. The original AW11 oil cooler is actually part of the inlet plumbing for the coolant uh, in this car. This hose comes from the radiator at the front of the car. It goes up here and normally it would cut across here to where the original filler neck would be mounted. Uh, when you do the 20 valve swap, most people choose to put a filler somewhere against the firewall like this. Um, there's a bajillion different ways of doing this. A lot of people eliminate this cooler and uh, a lot of this plumbing and just have a shorter run to a filler neck up here. I fabricated a couple of elbows using old scrap parts from an MR2, the plumbing lines, the radiator plumbing lines that go up the center tunnel. Uh, I took a couple of elbows off of those, just cut them down, welded up some brackets and made it so I could secure these to the engine bay. There's one there and there's one there, each on either side of this Moroso filler neck. I uh, don't really like the original AW11 filler neck. A lot of people just utilize that and stick it up here. This is actually a pretty cheap, much more elegant solution. Another problem you have to overcome when you're doing a 20 valve swap in an AW11 is the coolant overflow reservoir. It sits back in the corner of the engine bay like this. Uh, it's pretty bulky, pretty wide. The engine doesn't clear it. The plenum, the intake plenum on the silver top engine is uh, a lot bigger than the 16 valve intake. So I went to the junkyard and just wandered around looking at coolant reservoirs until I found this guy and this bracket. Um, I modified this bracket so that it bolts up to the holes inside the AW11 engine bay. I think the bottle came out of a Camry. Uh, I will find out which one it is and include it in the text of this video. There's several options and a lot of debate about what the best solution is for oil cooling if you 20 valve swap an AW11. 
the choice that I've made is to keep the original cooler in place, but I'm not gonna plumb it yet. I haven't figured a good solution out yet for getting the plumbing on the engine, but this way I don't really have to modify any of the coolant plumbing associated with the oil cooler, and I can just uncap these and hook up lines whenever I'm ready. Another thing you might want to change is the uh, heater core plumbing hoses. The original AW11 hoses have some very specific bends in them. I think they will reach the fittings on the engine that you need to reach, but they just kind of look goofy. Okay, so this is the outlet from the engine to the filler neck, to the oil cooler, and then to the radiator through the center tunnel. This one is from the radiator to the thermostat housing and into the engine. This one is out from the engine to the heater and this one is in from the heater to the engine. Okay, to illustrate more clearly on the engine that's not in the car. This one is the coolant outlet. It goes to the filler neck and to the radiator. This one is the coolant inlet. It comes from the radiator, goes through the thermostat, and into the engine. This one is the heater core outlet. Out of the engine to the heater core. Heater core inlet. From the heater core into the engine. You got it?